why colonizing the solar system will remain only a dream. I live on astronomy, and that's perhaps why people are surprised when I say I'm not an enthusiastic supporter of space colonization. I'm not at all. I just can't be. And I'm not just referring to exploring planetary systems of other stars, whose distances are and will forever be absolutely insurmountable, regardless of our technological capability. No, ladies and gentlemen, I'm also decidedly skeptical about the possibility of our species establishing bases or colonies on our home planets. Keep watching, I'll tell you why. I know, compared to the vastness of interstellar space, our own solar system seems, at first, almost comfortingly accessible. But when we begin to examine the prospects for colonization, things turn gloomy. Try to follow along. Why would we even think of setting foot on planets where we would have to live only in pressurized, air-conditioned environments, and where outside a hole in the suit would give us a minute or so of life? Usually, there are three goals that space conquest fanatics invoke to justify colonization. Scientific research, the search for and exploitation of new natural resources, the terraforming of a planet that can become a second Earth. The first point is the one I feel I agree with. Exploration understood as the search for life in the universe must be pursued at all times, and it is still the least complex and dangerous aspect of our activity in space. Increasingly intelligent robotic probes will indeed be able to operate in our place, without us having to descend to the planets as conquering demons or as desperate settlers in search of new lands. The second point on the list, on the other hand, I consider completely incomprehensible. We here on Earth do not have a problem with raw materials, but with overpopulation and political management of resources. Imagining a future where we will make the same mistakes by raiding asteroids and digging mines in dangerous, godforsaken places seems silly to me. Fortunately, this will never come to pass. There is indeed no convenience in digging materials millions of miles from home. The costs will be impractical, and those who will try will abandon the venture after a short time. There could only be affordability if the raw materials were produced and consumed locally on a reclaimed planet where millions of settlers would work and live with their families. And here we fall back on the third point. Do you, in our solar system, know of a planet that could be adapted to a second Earth? Do you know a place where you could go to live or bring your family? I don't think so. I think you would instead move to an Antarctic base, or for example to the Gobi Desert. Am I wrong? Are you thinking about terraforming Mars, the least troublesome planet of all? Well, take it from me, it would cost so much that we'd be better off colonizing our own ocean floors instead, or turn all of Earth's deserts into gardens and orchards. So even the pretense of colonizing the solar system will be put aside after a few years, when we come to realize that the stars are too far away and that our neighbors are unlivable worlds. And from then on, we will devote ourselves only to the moon here on our doorstep which will serve as an outpost for our scientific research, and to low orbit to improve living conditions on Earth through orbital control of satellites and space stations. If, however, you are still unconvinced by what I have just told you, you will certainly benefit from being convinced. Mercury The closest planet to the Sun. Minimum distance from Earth, 91 million kilometers. Diameter of 4,880 kilometers. No atmosphere poor water ice reserves, gravity 38% of that of Earth, surface temperature minus 180 to 430 degrees Celsius, the local day lasts 88 Earth days, hell on the diurnal side, and an icy desert on the night side. Dangerous proximity to the Sun, very difficult and expensive to get there with a rocket and descent to the surface. A planet with these characteristics is certainly not a prime candidate for colonization. However, there may be water ice reserves in its circumpolar regions. A possible base should and could only be built nearby. But for what purpose? On Mercury, any kind of human activity is possible. Colonization potential, 0 out of 10. My prediction, 
By 2033, an attempt will be made to lower a rover into the twilight zone of the North Pole. Some data will be collected, many articles will be written, and the small planet will then be judged hostile and unprofitable for mining exploitation. I believe that from 2040 onward, we will not even waste sending an orbital probe to Mercury anymore. Venus Minimum distance from Earth, 42 million kilometers. Diameter, 12,100 kilometers. Gravity, 90% of Earth's. The ground pressure of 92 atmospheres. Average surface temperature, 465 degrees Celsius. Greenhouse effect, volcanoes, no water. The atmosphere is poisonous, dominated by carbon dioxide. Length of day, 116 Earth days. If in terms of size and orbital parameters, Venus is defined as Earth's twin, then in terms of climate, it is a decidedly evil twin. The ambient temperature is higher than that required to melt lead. Atmosphere stifling, dense and poisonous. Pressure on the surface is comparable to what it would be at an ocean depth of 900 meters. Stuff for a submarine or sperm whales. Thick clouds eternally cover the sky making it yellow-orange during the day and hopelessly black at night. Not only to live there, but even to set foot on those inhospitable plains would be unthinkable. And certainly such a task is far beyond the technology available to us in the future. The raising for colonization is slightly higher than that of Mercury, but only because manned balloons could perhaps be flown in its atmosphere. Colonization potential, 1 out of 10. My prediction, although hellish, the Venusian environment will continue to present some very interesting aspects from a scientific point of view. Venus is a living planet, and this will earn the attention of planetologists and the sending of atmospheric probes and surface rovers. Certainly, however, it will never become the second Earth, nor will we ever plant bases there. The Moon Closest Body the average distance from Earth is 384,000 kilometers. Diameter, 3,400 kilometers. The atmosphere is absent. Gravity, 16.7% of Earth's. Surface temperature, minus 153 to 123 degrees Celsius. The local day lasts almost 30 of our days. No one doubts that the Moon will become humanity's first, and perhaps only, outpost outside the Earth. Of merits, it has several. It is very close to home, and communications flow with an almost imperceptible delay. We have already been there and know it quite well. It seems to be rich in raw materials, oxygen, water and fuel, possibly useful for launching missions further afield. Thousands of square kilometers of solar panels could be deployed here, then deflected back to Earth. Powerful telescopes could be set up in the hidden hemisphere as could large radio telescopes. Some bases could house technicians and scientists, and perhaps a few wealthy tourists. Very small communities of workers and visitors, in short, because even for the moon, I can't imagine anyone would choose to go and live there. Colonization potential, 5 out of 10. My prediction, within a decade or so, we will have a couple of bases around the South Pole. But the orbital station, the Lunar Gateway, will never be built. Problems will arise, including political ones, and when things start to get slow, the public will protest the high sky costs. Musk will defect and the moon will go the way of the ISS, a place where crews warily alternate with no real reason. More decades will have to pass with new technologies to make the moon an effective scientific outpost, but it will only be a matter of time. Mars. Minimum distance from Earth, 55 million kilometers. Diameter, 6,780 kilometers. Gravity, 38% that of the Earth. Surface temperature, minus 126 to plus 20 degrees Celsius. The atmosphere is rarefied and irrespirable, the main component being carbon dioxide. There are reserves of water and dry ice. The Martian day is virtually the same as Earth's. So are the seasons, differing only in that they are almost twice as long. They say it is the planet with the most Earth-like environmental conditions. And indeed, in some areas, the temperature can reach the values of a warm spring of our own. 
but the very thin atmosphere and near zero pressure would still dictate the use of a full bodysuit for outdoor activities. There is also a lack of a magnetic field to block solar radiation harmful to our bodies. Mars is also very far away and can be reached only by journeys lasting several months. In addition, because of the particular configuration of Mars's and Earth's orbits, astronauts would have to wait at least a year on its surface before they could return home. It follows that they would have to carry supplies and equipment with them to survive, without being able to rely on anyone's help in case of trouble. Establishing the first bases, however, will require dozens and dozens of missions to get all the necessary materials there. But then, what to do with them? I can only conceive of an expedition of scientists eager to solve the problem of Martian life. But I absolutely don't see what purpose we would have to settle settler communities in the Martian deserts. What could a settler or a miner get from the surface of the Red Planet that he could not already find here on Earth in the Gobi Desert. What's more, with the possibility of living a normal life and breathing air at the top of his lungs? Colonization potential 3 out of 10. My prediction, we will be able to set foot on Mars within a decade or so, but with results that are more emotional than substantive. And even when the last hope of finding life on that planet is gone, people will become disinterested just as they are disinterested now in the Australian desert. Too distant and inconvenient to think of setting up a home there. Ceres The largest object in the main asteroid belt. The minimum distance from Earth is 265 million kilometers. Diameter, 940 kilometers. Gravity, 3% of Earth's. The atmosphere is absent. The average surface temperature of minus 106 degrees Celsius. According to the most optimistic predictions, the dwarf planet Ceres, along with all its smaller siblings, will soon become a kind of Klondike, where public and private space agencies will rush to make money in mining. Indeed, the asteroid belt is considered a treasure trove of valuable raw materials. Once again, however, it is worth pointing out that the great distance, the absence of an atmosphere, and the temperatures as low as minus 170 degrees Celsius will certainly not be a good calling card when trying to assemble the human labor force needed to open the first mines. And on balance, it will be seen that the expenses will far outweigh the profits, unless the mine materials are used on site. But mined by whom? With what? And to do what with? Colonization potential 0 out of 10. My prediction it will be perhaps 20 years before a digging probe is sent to some asteroid to prove that mining is a feasible and cost-effective venture. We'll bring home a couple of pounds of randomly gathered material, and then all dreams about Project Klondike will be tucked away in a drawer. Hang on a sec, guys, before we continue. Be sure to join the Insane Curiosity channel. Click on the bell. You will help us to make products of even higher quality. Europa fourth largest of Jupiter's moons, minimum distance from Earth of 630 million kilometers, diameter of 3,120 kilometers, gravity 13% of Earth's, average surface temperature minus 240 degrees Celsius, atmosphere virtually absent. Despite all the hype around Mars, it is this moon of Jupiter and not the red planet that is the most suitable place to search for extraterrestrial life. On paper, plans for automated and manned missions are being developed. However, even robotic vehicles on Europa are still a dream, and no one seriously thinks that a permanent base could be established there. Lack of atmosphere, nightmarish temperature is an ice-only surface. To get to the supposed ocean of water below in search of life would require drilling tens of kilometers, or hoping to examine some material ejected by some geysers. If it is done, this will be a job for a robot, certainly not for a human crew. Colonization potential, 1 out of 10. My prediction, it will be at least 20 years before a robotic probe can descend on Europa. It will find no trace of life, and this will cause not only Europa, but also Io, Callisto, and Ganymede, the other large moons of Jupiter, to fall into oblivion. Titan. Saturn's largest satellite. 
minimum distance from Earth of 1,280 million kilometers, diameter of 5,150 kilometers, gravity 14% of Earth's, average temperature minus 180 degrees Celsius, the atmosphere of nitrogen and methane, ground atmospheric pressure 1.5 times Earth's. Despite the breathtaking distance and all other impediments, I feel like assigning a nice 2 out of 10 as a theoretical possibility of settling a very small human colony on Titan in the future. As a well-known astrobiologist in fact said, if you're flying to the edge of the solar system and you have to make an emergency landing, run to Titan. Titan is the only place where there is a heavy atmosphere like ours with nice clouds from which rains fall a world where rivers flow and there are lakes and seas. This is all true, but also all false. Lakes and seas are of liquid methane and other hydrocarbons and not water. The atmosphere is still unbreathable. The Sun, Saturn, and the stars are perpetually obscured by haze. We have been to Titan before, though with the small Huygens probe, and the landscapes photographed during the descent do not differ much from ours. Colonization potential 2 out of 10. My prediction, Titan is an extraordinarily diverse world, a kind of amusement park for those doing scientific research. The Dragonfly mission has already been scheduled for 2027, with the 2034 arrival of a drone that will fly for miles looking for traces of life. No human, however, will ever touch its surface. Of that, I am sure. Pluto Dwarf planet in the Kuiper Belt Minimum distance from Earth, 5,800 million kilometers. Diameter, 2,380 kilometers. Gravity, 6% of Earth's. The average temperature of minus 230 degrees Celsius. Extremely rarefied methane atmosphere. Having lost its status as a planet in 2006, in 2015 Pluto was flown over by the New Horizons probe which gave us an enormous amount of data and photographic footage. Here too we have an extraordinarily diverse and scientifically interesting surface, but no chance for human crews to descend on it. On Pluto everything is beautiful, but everything is a problem, made worse by the enormous distance separating it from Earth. Colonization potential 0 out of 10. My prediction, we will definitely send more probes to Pluto but only for research into its origin, which is still debated. Here's the situation. I don't claim to be right about everything, and maybe reviewing this video 50 years from now, someone will get the same laugh that we still get now reading about those who said men would never fly on an airplane. But I find that sometimes a little healthy realism can serve to better understand why certain hard stops in the realization of so many space dreams. Dreams flaunted, perhaps, too lightly. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. And be sure to watch our other videos through the YouTube end screens and playlists.